Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lower United Methodist Church. In such a beautiful day, we are ready to worship the Lord together. As always, Benjamin and Julie will help us. Let us center our minds. Let us quiet our souls. Let us begin to worship our living God. by the sounds of the word. Let us enter into a time of worship. Let us exhale our worries and inhale the spirit of God that surrounds us. Whatever we are, let us find a space to empty our souls and center in worshiping the living God. Join me in the call to worship. We have come to worship God who holds our future. We will move beyond the past that holds us captive. God's steadfast love will heal our spirits, who will help us discover the road to salvation. Let us sing to the Lord with renewed voices. Let us sing of his love forever. 
Let us worship our God together and forever praise his holy name. Join me in the opening prayer. Lord, you welcome us into your life and invite us to welcome others in love with a cup of water or a bite of bread, with a moment of conversation or a word of wisdom. May your endless love guide us to open our hearts to those who yearn to be welcomed in your presence. Amen. this morning. 
Send your spirit for those who need your joy. Bless them with your compassion. Bless them with your peace, O Lord. Help us center in your presence as we worship. Fill our lives, O Lord, with your spirit. Mold us, make us, send us in your name to bless your word, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 8 through 11. But if we died with Christ, we have faith that we will also live with him. We know that Christ has been raised from the dead, and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. He died to sin once and for all with his death, but he lives for God with his life. In the same way, you also should consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus.
The text is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. the world in many cultures, hospitality and welcoming is an important trait. If you ask anyone from my country, from Puerto Rico, they will tell you that definitely whoever comes to your house, you have to eat there because the first thing they will do is offer you food. I'm sure in many other places it's exactly the same. Welcoming. Welcoming is a trait for many of us culturally. But in this particular passage, is there, there is so much death in Jesus' words. Remember, we have been talking about Jesus training his disciples, educating them, preparing them, as he sent them two by two around the cities and the villages. His words are made for them to help understand this amazing task that has been given to them. But as we know, sometimes our hearts get a little trouble when God sends us to do something that seems to be too big. So he's telling them, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me, and welcomes the Father that sent me. It is an understanding that in welcoming, there is a blessing. Whether we are the ones who are welcomed by someone in their house or in their hearts, or whether we are the ones who open the doors of our homes or hearts to welcome someone. Because the presence of the living God is with us. Whether we welcome or we are welcomed, there is blessing in the name of Christ. I learned, I learned to welcome people in my home by my own mother. There was a neighbor that was called, his name was Vicente, or Vincent will be in English. Well, we call it Don Vicente. Don Vicente was an elderly man, and I really, really didn't like him. I was always afraid of him, and he talked so much. And every time he will come around, he will come to our house, and I always say, Mom, why does he always have to come to our house? Aren't all other neighbors around? And he will sit with my father, and he will talk, and my father will talk, and they will laugh, and I will get jealous. I wanted to be the one with my father, but there is Don Vicente taking all the time and all the space. The worst part was when my mother, a Puerto Rican mother, she would always offer coffee. Don Vicente, would you like a cup of coffee? And you could see his smile. And he would always say, yes, yes, Mr. Rosario, yes. And guess who has to give him the cup of coffee? Of course it was me. I was trained by my mother to always be hospitable, to always welcome, to be the one that will bring uh, the, the lemon juice or the cup of water, or usually a cup of coffee to whoever will come to our house. And I was always happy to do it, except when it was Don Vicente. I just, I just didn't like him, but I did. Every week he will come around. And I will smile and be polite and give him the cup of coffee. It was later that I 
learn the story of Don Vicente, who really didn't have a place where to live, and he will go from relative to relative for a few months at a time. And he will come to our house because, as he said to my father, this is the only place I always feel welcomed and I always feel at home. One night in Christmas, there is a tradition of bringing music to the neighbors. I hear this music, Christmas music, and I look through the window. It was Don Vicente. He couldn't sing or bring music himself. So he has this little radio, and he put it all on the volume, and he put it in our balcony to serenade us in the night as we sleep. And as I look through the window, he took the radio and started running back home so we will never know who brought us the beautiful music. I learned. I learned to welcome. I learned to receive people in my heart and in my home, even when I was not so sure. Because through my mom and my father, I learned that when we welcome, God is present. That when we receive, God comes alive in our lives, in our midst. Those who welcome you, welcome me and welcome the Father. Those who receive, welcome me and welcome the God Almighty. Those who can open their hearts to welcome others, no matter who they are, no matter how they look, no matter if you like them or not, there is blessing. Because the Lord that sends the people to us, those who need to be loved, those who cannot find a home anywhere else are coming to us because we have been called by God to bless. And those who welcome us, welcome the Father. And when we welcome, we receive the blessing of the living God. So there are times in which we are the ones that receive and welcome. And there are times in which we are the ones that go. And you know, sometimes it's a lot easier to receive, but when we're going, this is me going my things, there is an emergency, there is someone I have to visit, and I'm, you know, I'm a pastor, I'm right going to, to, to work, to do my job well, and sometimes I forget that it's as important to keep the relationship that it is for me to do my job well, and they offer me something. Do you want a cup of water? Do you want a cup of coffee? And many times I say yes, but sometimes I'm so focused in other things that I say just no, I cannot stop just for a glass of water. And I miss the point that people are offering their love, that people are trying to let me know that they care for me. And those times in which I miss the point, I sometimes feel I miss the blessing. When we go in the name of Christ, we give others the privilege to serve the Lord, to offer what they have, to welcome us in the name of Christ, to let the blessing of the living God be among us. Whether we welcome or we are welcome, there is always a blessing. There is blessing in going to others, bringing the peace of God. We might not think it's a big deal. We might not think we don't want to bother others. But the reality is that when we accept the hospitality and the welcoming of others, we are giving them the privilege of blessing us with their love. Welcome is deep truth, one of the cardinal important things for us as Christians. I'll tell you a story I haven't told anyone. When I started in this church, you know, I was learning who the people were, 
and I would sometimes confuse people, don't tell this to anyone, but one time I was invited to a Thanksgiving dinner and I thought I knew who had invited, but I got confused. So that Thanksgiving day, I got in my car and got to the wrong house and the wrong family. Just by surprise, they were not expecting me. And I knock in the door, it's Thanksgiving day. And I knock in the door and it's like, hi, here I am. And I knew there was something else, something different. But the, the owner of the house, I'm not going to tell you who it was, opened the house, invited me in. There was no party, there was no one else, and I knew I had made a mistake, but I couldn't realize what it was. Oh, she served me the food. Oh, these are leftovers. We already have lunch, but pastor, come and see it and eat with us. And as I'm eating with them, I receive a message from the right family that are waiting for me, and I realize my mistake. So I eat the food, and I give thanks, and I realize what an amazing congregation this is. So full of love that they're willing to welcome me even when I'm come by surprise in the wrong day and at the wrong time. Welcoming. Welcoming is always a blessing. In our lives, in our home, we have welcomed someone into our lives. Julie had that desire in her heart to, to offer our home as, a, as an oasis, as a place in which some teenager will come and share their lives with us. And I said, yes, sure, of course. We thought of a temporary place that we will welcome someone in need. And when the phone call came that morning, Julie was the one that received it. They needed to place a teenager. And they needed to do it right away that morning. Were we willing to receive him? And of course, Julie said yes. And I remember her words, Mom, if they're calling us, that means they have called a lot of people. And they are at the end of the road. And I said, well, yeah. To be honest, I was not that ready. I was not sure. But Julie, Julie had that call from God. She knew God was in this. So we received Cody that morning. And Cody was so different from us. And almost a year later, we had a family. I have learned so much from this American teenage boy who lives with us. And he has matured so much. But the most amazing thing for me is when we are at home and suddenly I hear Julie laughing. You know how she laughs? Loud laughter. Laughter like I haven't heard in a long time. Laughter like it's so happy and blessed. Laughter like when she was a little girl, free without troubles or fears. That kind of laughter. And when I hear my daughter laughing because Cody has said something or done something funny, I know we are blessed. We are blessed. There is a blessing in welcoming even the leaders ones, the rejected ones. The ones that have no home or no place to go. Even if all we do is give them a cup of water or a cup of coffee, there is a blessing. Jesus calls to welcome others. And he also calls to remember that when we go in his name, two by two or one by one, we bring his blessing to whatever we go. God bless you.
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If I will hold your people in my heart. I will hold your people in my heart. And now I invite you to join me in the final benediction. Let us go forth to seek God's will. Let us welcome with love those who come in Jesus' name. Let us consider ourselves dead to sin but alive in God. Let us go forth to bless the world in Jesus' name. And may the presence of the living God be with us today and forevermore. Amen.